Okay, we are getting ready for our Unit 1 test. So I am going to go over the Unit 1 review. And I'm going to use my graphing calculator because it's going to be easier for me to um, show you with that. But I know that a lot of you will be using the online graphing calculator or you might be using Desmos. But we'll all get the same thing. It doesn't matter what we use. But for the purpose of making the video, I'm just going to use this, okay? All right, so number one says, which symmetry is represented by the function f of x equals x squared? All right, so first, you need to know what this graph looks like. So if you don't know what this graph looks like, then you're going to need to graph it, okay? And if you know what it looks like, then fantastic. So I'm going to go to my y equals, and I'm going to type in x squared. So x is to the right of the green alpha, and then I can just click this squared button. Or I can use the caret and then two, but I'm gonna use a little squared button. So I've got x squared and I'm gonna hit graph so I can take a look. Ooh, my window's funky. So I'm gonna go to zoom and then number six, and this is gonna take my window back to normal. Okay, so this is our x squared function. So I'm just gonna draw a little rough sketch of it over here. So its vertex is at zero, zero, and it looks something like that. So this is our quadratic parent function, and it wants to know which symmetry is true. Well, this graph is a reflection over the y-axis because this point is the same distance from the y-axis as this one is, and this point's the same distance from the y-axis as this one is. So I want to look for that, and here it is. It's reflectional symmetry in the y-axis which means the graph is a reflection over the y-axis. If you were to fold this paper on the y-axis, the left side of the graph would lay on top of the right side. So that is a reflection in the y-axis. All right, number two. It says, what is the intercepts of the function f of x equals the cubed root of x? Okay, so if you know what this graph looks like, fantastic. And if you don't, then you need to look at it. So this is where you'd use your online graphing calculator, your own graphing calculator, or Desmos. Okay, so I'm going to go to y equals. I'm going to hit clear. And then the cubed root, I have to go to math. And then the cubed root is number 4. And then I'm going to put my x in there, which is to the right of the green alpha. And let's just hit graph and take a look. So, just a little rough sketch of it. It looks something like this. This is the graph I like to think of that looks like a snake, and it goes through zero, zero. So, when it asks for the intercepts, it wants to know what's the x-intercept and what's the y-intercept. And this graph is touching the x-axis right here at zero, zero, and this graph is touching the y-axis right here also at zero, zero. So, that is our x and y intercept, which is true of many of the parent functions. Okay, number three. It says, which of the following can be used to represent the domain and range of f of x equals the absolute value of x? Okay, so we need to know what this graph looks like. Okay, I know what it looks like, but if you don't, then we need to find it. Okay, so let's go to our y equals. I'm going to hit clear. Now the absolute value bars are hiding from you. So I have to go to math under the green alpha. And I have to right arrow over. So num for number is highlighted. And number one is what I want, abs. So I'm just going to hit enter. And then I'm going to put my little x in there. And I can right arrow to pop out of those absolute value bars. And I'm going to just hit graph. So absolute value, there is a V in value, and this is a V-shaped graph. Okay, so just a little rough sketch of it. It looks something like this. So it's asking about domain, and it's asking about range. Okay, so domain. I'm going forever to the left. I'm going forever to the right. So domain 
is all real numbers. Forever to the left, forever to the right. That's also when you go forever to the left, going to negative infinity. And when you go forever to the right, you're going to positive infinity. So it's negative infinity, comma, positive infinity. Okay, and then range, I'm looking up and down now. And this graph goes forever up on this side and forever up on this side, but it doesn't go forever down. There's no arrow when you're going down. So this is the lowest the graph goes. There's no part of the graph down here. So range is about y, so I need to know my y value at this lowest spot. And my y value starts off equaling a zero. And then when you go up, 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 your y's get greater. And to write that in interval notation, the graph starts at zero, and when it goes forever up, y's are getting bigger, bigger, so they're headed to positive infinity. So it starts at zero, and it goes to positive infinity. Because this is a closed circle, and it has an equals, the zero gets a bracket, and infinity is always a parenthesis because you can't equal infinity. All right, so let's look at our choices over here. So number one says domain is all real numbers. Okay, I said that. And range is y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, I said that. So number one is true. Let's look at number two. Domain says x such that x is an element of all real numbers. Okay, this is a really fancy way of saying all real numbers. So that is true. Range says y such that y is greater than or equal to zero. Well, that's the same thing as this. It's just this is called inequality notation, whereas this is called set builder notation. So this statement and this statement are just like that. So number two is true. Okay, number three says domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, and that's true. That's what represents all real numbers. And range starts at zero and goes to positive infinity. And that is also true. So one, two, and three are all true. So you have to know the different notations. So just know that this and this mean the same thing. It's just this is called inequality notation and this is called uh, set builder notation. And this and this are the same. And then uh, interval notation is the one that uses the pr uh, parentheses and the brackets and the infinities. All right, next one. A logarithmic function is shown below. Which attribute does not describe the graph of this function? Okay, so if you don't know what this graph looks like, then you graph it, okay? All right, so if you're using Desmos, you'll find the, the things in different locations, but if you are able to use the online graphing calculator, then your things should be in the same place as mine, okay? so. I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to clear this off, and I'm going to go to math, which is under the green alpha, and I'm going to stay in this math column, but I'm going to arrow down, and there it is. It's letter A. So I'm going to hit enter. I need to put a 2 right here, so 2. I'm going to right arrow, and I'm going to put an X right there and I'm gonna right arrow just to hop out of it. So this is log base two of x. So I'm gonna hit graph just to take a peek. And this is our logarithmic graph. Now, you do have to remember that the y-axis is an asymptote. So this graph is never allowed to touch the y-axis. It looks like it's going to, but it's not. So. Um, also, I'm going to look to see what that little point is right there. So I'm going to go to my table and 1, 0. So right here at 1, 0, the graph is touching the x-axis. And of course, I could go to the table and I could just plot my points for myself to get a better idea of what the picture looks like. But it looks something like this. And this is the point one zero. Okay. So now, what's it asking? All right, it says, which attribute does not describe the graph of this function? Okay, so let's talk about domain. Domain is left and right. So 
this graph is definitely going forever right and it looks like it's going to go forever left because when you go left you hit an arrow but the problem is that asymptote stops it from going forever left because this graph is not allowed to touch or cross this so if this graph can't touch or cross the y-axis then the graph will never be over here okay so the domain when you're coming this way your x value is getting closer and closer to being zero so the domain starts off with the x being close to zero but it's not going to equal it and when you go right 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 the x's get greater now if i was to write this in interval notation it's starting at zero and when it goes to the right it gets greater 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 so it's headed to positive infinity. Now because it's never going to equal the zero, zero is a parenthesis, and infin infinity is always a parenthesis. So when we look at answer choice A, it says domain is zero to infinity. And that's true. The domain is zero to infinity. Okay, B says the range is negative infinity to positive infinity. So let's talk about the range. Range you're looking up and down. So as I move my marker down, I hit an arrow, so it goes forever down. As I move my marker up, I hit an arrow, so it goes forever up. So this graph goes forever down, forever up. And so that is all real numbers, or negative infinity to positive infinity. So when it says that the range is negative infinity to positive infinity, that is also true. Okay, the x-intercept at 1, 0. And sure enough, this graph is touching the x-axis right there at 1, 0. So D is the one that must be false. So if I was to figure out the equation of the asymptote, so the asymptote is the y-axis. This is a vertical line known as a VUX. Vertical line, undefined slope. Use x when you write the equation. So x equals, and everywhere on the x-axis, I'm sorry, the y-axis, your x value is 0 because you're not right or left any. So the asymptote should be x equals zero and not y equals zero. So D is wrong because the asymptote is x equals zero. Okay, number five. We decided not to teach you um, a problem that looked like this when we taught the lesson. So we're just gonna get rid of it. Number five, gone. Ready to go? Number six. So number six, it gives you the graph of a function. And then it says, if the domain of f of x is restricted to x greater than or equal to negative two, which graph could represent the inverse? This is the inverse of f of x. Okay, so first let's talk about this. It says the domain is restricted to x greater than or equal to negative 2. That means I only want to look at this graph where my x is a negative 2 or greater than that. So I'm going to go to where x is negative 2, and that's right here on the graph. And then I want to know where x's are greater than that. Well, x's get greater when you go to the right. So when it's asking for you to look at the graph where x is greater than or equal to negative 2, it's asking you to just look at this half of the graph. So that means I don't want to look at the other half of the graph at all. So I'm going to put my phone on it. Don't even bother looking at that. Okay, so now I am going to make a table for f of x. So this point right here. We're left 2 and down 5. So that's the point negative 2, negative 5. And I'm just going to look for some points that look nice. This point looks nice. Um, we're not right or left, so our x is 0, but we're down 3. So 0, negative 3. And let's just do what looks like another one. Maybe this one. So this looks like we're right 3 and up 8. So that would be 3, 8. Okay, so that is a table for this picture, but only look when I'm looking where x is negative 2 and greater. So now, if I want to do the inverse of f of x, 
then this is when you flip-flop all your X's and Y's. So whenever you're finding the inverse, you flip the X and Y. So negative two, negative five, flip it, becomes negative five, negative two. So the X becomes the Y and the Y becomes the X. Flip it, we've got negative three, zero. So the X became the Y and the Y became the X. That's what happens when you work with inverses. And if I flip it, I get eight, three. Okay, so down below, it wants to know which of these graphs could represent the inverse. So I wanna be looking for these points. So I'm gonna look down below and see which graph plotted these points. Okay, so first let's look for negative five, negative two. So just looking. Negative five, negative two, it's got it. Let's look at this one. Negative five, negative two. The graph is not there. Okay, so this one's out. Okay, let's look at this one. Negative five, negative two. The graph is not there. That one's out. Okay, let's look at this one. Negative five, negative two. Okay, we're there. All right, let's look at the next one. Negative three, zero. So that would be left three, stay put. That would be left three, stay put. Okay, these look like they are both looking fine. Eight, three, that's right eight and up three. It's got it. And right eight and up three and it's got it. Okay, so when you look at just these points, both of these graphs have them. But here's the deal. Something else you need to know. Graphs that are inverses are reflections over the line y equals x. Well, all they want you to be looking at is this half of the graph. So if you're just looking at this half of the graph and you flipped it over this line y equals x, you would only get half of the graph. You wouldn't get the whole graph. So if I flip the whole graph over this, I would get the whole graph. But since the problem said only look where x is greater than or equal to negative two, they only want me to look at half of the graph. So if you take half the graph and flip it over this line, you're only gonna get half of the graph. So that would be this guy. So I guess there's a few things you need to know about inverses. So one thing is the x's and y's flip. Flip, flip, flip. Another thing you need to know is their reflections of each other over this line y equals x. But you really had to pay attention to this. And it only wanted you to look at half the graph, so you're only flipping half the graph over, which means you'd only get half the graph when you're done. And that's why that guy is the one I want. Okay, on to number seven. All right, number seven. It says, given the function f of x equals negative two x minus three, which of the following is the graphical representation of the inverse of f of x? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to graph this in my calculator, and then I'm gonna look at a table. And then I'm gonna take all those numbers and I'm gonna flip them around. And then that will be my inverse, and then I'm gonna see which one plotted them correctly. Okay, so I'm just gonna get ready here. So first I'm gonna have a table for f of x. And then I'm gonna have a table for the inverse of f of x. So we have to do a lot of flippity floppities. Okay. So I'm gonna to go to my graphing calculator and I'm gonna put this equation in. All right, so I'm gonna to go to y equals, I'm gonna clear that off, I'm gonna write negative two x minus three. So this is a negative, this is a minus. And then I'm gonna hit, um, well I could look at it, but I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna to go to the table. So I'm gonna go second graph. Okay, I'm just gonna write down some of these numbers and it doesn't matter which ones I write down. So I'm gonna just start with this one. Zero, negative three, one, negative five, 
to negative 7. Okay, so for the inverse, I'm going to flip them all. So if I flip 0, negative 3, I get negative 3, 0. If I flip 1, negative 5, I get negative 5, 1. If I flip 2, negative 7, I get negative 7, 2. So I'm going to look to see which graph plotted these right. Look for these points. So whichever graph plotted these points correctly will be our winner winner chicken dinner because we're looking for the inverse of f of x. So I had to find the table of the original equation then I had a flippity floppity it all and then now I'm going to look for those points. Okay so first one up negative 3 0 that means go left 3 don't go up or down. All right left three don't go up or down well that line is not going through that so that guy's out okay i'm gonna just go down left three don't go up or down this graph is not going through that this guy's out okay let's look at this one left three don't go up or down okay he's looking okay let's look at this one left three don't go up or down okay he's looking all right okay let's look at the next point negative five one that means go left five go up one. So let's try this guy. Left five, up one. Nope, that line's not going through it. He's out. And let's just make sure this one's fine. Left five, up one. Bing, 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 bing. We have our winner, winner, chicken dinner, folks. All right, on to number eight. Okay, number eight. The graph of a function is shown below, and then it says which point would lie on the inverse. All right, so I'm gonna do what I've done on the last couple problems. I'm going to make a table for the original function. So I'm gonna make a table just by looking at this original function's graph. Then I'm gonna flippity floppity and I'm going to get the table for the inverse. Okay, and there are other ways of doing this, of course. Okay, so I'm just needing to pick some points here. Um, and I'm gonna find points that look nice. Okay, this goes left one, down three. So that's negative one, negative three. Okay, this one, you don't go right, you don't go left, so your x is zero, but you go down two. So that's zero, negative two. Okay, um, this one looks good. I go right one, down one, so that's one, negative one. Okay, let's do some flippity floppities. So if I flip this one around, I get negative three, one. Negative three, negative one, I'm sorry. If I flip this one around, I get negative two, zero. If I flip this one around, I get negative one, one. Okay, and I'm just gonna see which points are down here from what I'm looking at here. Okay, so first, um, zero, negative two. Do we see zero, negative two? No. Okay, do we see one, negative one? One, negative one, no. Do we see negative three, negative one? Negative three, negative one. Bing, 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 bing. So this point is on the inverse. So whenever you're doing things with inverses, try to get some points for the original graph or equation, and then just flippity floppity them all. And that's gonna be what's on your inverse. Okay, next one up. It says, which table represents points that satisfy the inverse of the function f of x equals two to the x. Okay, so I'm gonna do what I've been doing on the last several problems. I am going to make a table for the original function. And then I'm gonna flippity floppity them and see which of these I see. Because these are all the inverse of 
f of x over here. So these have already been flippity floppity. Okay, so I'm going to put this into my graphing calculator. So I go to y equals, and I'm going to clear that off, and I'm going to type in 2 to the x. So 2, and then above the division bar is this caret. So I'm going to click that. It looks like a little roof. So 2 to the x, and then x, remember, is to the right of the green alpha. Okay, I just don't want the table, so I'm going to go second graph and get some points on the table. Okay, um, looking at these, we do have some in the negatives, so let's do a few in the negatives. Mm, I'll just try to do the pretty ones. All right, so we've got negative 1. 0.5, we've got 0, 1, we've got 1, 2, and 2, 4. Okay, now I need to see if we were to flip all these over, which of these shows that. So if I was to flip this one around, I'll just do it over here. So this is going to be my inverse of f of x. If I flip this around, I get 0 0.5, negative 1. If I flip this around, I get 1, 0. If I flip this one around, I get 2, 1. And if I flip this one around, I get 4, 2. Okay, I'm looking for this table over here. All right, so let's look. So 1 half, negative 1. Oh, here's 1 half, negative 1. 1, 0. Oh, here's 1, 0. 2, 1. Oh, here's 2, 1. And 4, 2. Here's 4, 2. Now, this one had the 4, 2, and it had the 2, 1, but it didn't have any of those others. So this one is going to be our answer. Now, if you weren't certain because it looked like several of these are right, you could flip this around. And if you flip this around, you would get negative 2, negative 4. So you'd want to look for negative 2, negative 4 in this table, and you don't see negative 2, negative 4. So that means it can't be this one. Okay. I am going to stop the video at this point, and then I'm going to start another video starting with number 10, just so the videos aren't extremely long. Okay, so I'm going to stop this one, and then I will pick back up the next video with number 10.